privilege and honor to stand before you tonight and to officially open the 10th lecture uh, of the Mejukoniwe School of Leadership and Governance. This year we're celebrating 21 years of existence. I'm glad to say we're back on track towards repositioning Mejukoniwe School of Leadership and Governance as a tertiary education institution. And this will be to close the gaps that universities are unable to close in making sure that uh, our ECT practitioners are well qualified to service the sector. And it, it just shows we don't shy away from critical issues that are facing the sector, but we seek to address them head on. And here we are today, uh, the theme being transformational leadership for change in society. 21 years of existence of this particular institution, the dreams and hopes that they have to take this institution to a national level and to also establish it as an institution of higher learning. And by the way, um, Premier and MEC, he also said that 1.5 million lives, 1.5 million lives have been touched by this particular organization. Throughout the 21 years of existence, the institution traversed a very complex route. As you would know, that in our country we have had to overhaul the curriculum, deal with the training backlog, particularly teachers who were very poorly trained by the then regime. It was a huge task. We have also had to train school governing bodies because the democratic government had put a new dispensation. We've also had to train representative council of learners because a new dispensation had come to bear, destroying the old oppressive uh, prefect system. And our vision is very clear, is that we want to be a leading training institute, not only in the country, but beyond. And I'm sure had he lived, he would be making a very impactful contribution towards the transformation of our education in our country. It is known that Africa only had black people, Asia had yellow people, and Europe had white people. Now, it is very absurd to have to say that we Africans were not there when the white men had came. Secondly, the conqueror writes our history. They came, they conquered, and they wrote. Now, how do you expect people who came to invade us to write the truth about us? They will always write negative things about us. They have to do that because they have to justify their invasion. We do not write our history. It has been handed over to us orally by our elders. In fact, you do not know anything about any place until a white man gets there. Until a white man comes to you and says, Boof, I have discovered you and now you may live, which is ridiculous. Those who know must write. Let us take this opportunity to reflect <clears throat> on whether we have done justice to the memory of Matthew Koniwe. So stories that, that desperately need to be told remain untold. The name of Matthew Koniwe is nowhere in our school books. The curriculum taught to our children is far from ideal. To achieve this, we need a curriculum that does not act as a rationale for plundering our resources. We need a curriculum that acts as an undercurrent of a sovereign people. In honor of Mithi Koniwe, our education system should begin to challenge the paradox of a wealthy Africa that is inhabited by impoverished Africans. So I am going to talk about how I feel more than what I think. So what I wanted to do tonight was to build on that, to ask the questions about who, why, what, and what does it mean for us today? So what I want to argue is in remembering we've also got to recommit. They were remarkable men who spent all their working life working for the community, daily, weekly, being a teacher, being a principal, being a community leader with such dedication and remarkable woman, Ramonde and Nyameka. It's the actions that we take that make 
the meaning of Matthew's life, the meaning of Fort's life, the meaning of Sakello's life, and the meaning of so many people's life have meaning. It's in our actions, not in concrete and metal, not in paper. So I had to, in thinking about this lecture, get past my anger, which you can see is real. I can't hide it. I'm angry. I get emotional about this stuff. It just, for people to have died in that vicious way, and for there not to be justice, and not justice for the family. So I myself have to move away from my anger, and this is how I move away from my anger. We have to honor, deliberatively, thoughtfully, and deliberately. I have to recommit to continue to make a difference. What were the instruments that Matthew and Fort had? Principle, courage, love and concern for people, and real commitment. We have more power that comes from law, that comes from the gift of history. But if we don't match it with principle, with resisting the trappings of power, with courage, with real love and concern, with the rejection of materialism, we're not going to have the impact that they had with so much less. So we've got to honor their memory. We've got to honor the memory and how we make the Constitution real. Matthew Gonue School of Leadership must be prepared to be an institution that will produce new educators, educators of the future. All teachers are trained from the same port, but the outcomes are different when they're deployed in our institution. It must come to an end. If you are trained from the same port, the outcome must be the same. And therefore, Matthew Gonue, you should be that first institution that will train teachers, and all the teachers that are trained from Matthew Gonue, the output must be the same regardless of the school that we deployed. I have not seen an institution that takes a conscious effort to involve uh, the family uh, the way that uh, Matthew Goniwe uh, School of Leadership does. The name lives on, and so does the legacy. And once again, thank you so much to the family for the contribution that they have given to us by supporting him in his endeavors to making this country a much better world.